Today I'd like to take our journey into chapter 8 of the Gospel of Matthew. Uh, and in the beginning of chapter 8, <coughs> we see a wonderful story of Jesus cleansing uh, a leper. And Jesus is coming down from the mountain, uh, the mountain in which he gave the Sermon on the Mount in chapters 5 through 7. <coughs> and then a great crowd followed him. As we've seen, Jesus was quite the teacher, and he taught with much authority. And so the crowds were very receptive to his teaching, and they wanted to hear more. So then a leper comes up and approaches Jesus. And the leper actually does homage to Jesus and says, Lord, if you wish, you can make me clean. So here is this leper who, I guess, doesn't know Jesus that well, but has heard of Jesus and has heard the impression that Jesus has made on so many people and what a great teacher he is. And <coughs> so the leper approaches Jesus for a healing, uh, which, of course, would have been quite unusual because le lepers were restricted and they only be in certain areas, and the idea of a leper approaching someone, uh, that was not uh, the usual custom. Lepers uh, kept their distance because of the fear of people catching uh, leprosy. So Jesus stretches out his hand, uh, touches the leper, and says, I will do it. Be made clean. Jesus was something in this leper that caused him to respond so positively to the request of the leper. And not only to respond to the request, but actually to go and above beyond that with the touching of the leper. And then Matthew writes, his leprosy was cleansed immediately. So whatever... Uh, aspect of leprosy he had in terms of the skin lesions or uh, any sort of problems with any illness of the, of the skin or scarring. Uh, it was cleansed immediately. There was no hesitation. So then Jesus said to him, see that you tell no one, but go show yourself to the priest and offer the gift that Moses prescribed. That will be proof for them. So Jesus is encouraging this leper who has been healed to follow all the prescriptions of the law, which would be to offer the uh, proper offerings and, and go to the priest and make sure that the priest inspects uh, the leprosy and certifies the healing. The ritual that Jesus is invoking here is found in the book of Le Leviticus, chapter 14, verse 2 to 9. And again, Jesus, following uh, the, the Jewish laws, the Jewish prescriptions, the Jewish religious practices, uh, very carefully. <coughs> and Leviticus says, He shall be brought to the priest who is to go outside the camp to examine him. So the priest shouldn't be in the camp. The priest should be going outside of the camp. Again, the idea of the exclusion from the community. If the priest finds that the sore of leprosy has healed in the leper, so the sores uh, on the face or the skin have been uh, healed, shall order the man who is to be purified, so the man has to go through a purification ritual, he has to get two live, clean birds, so not the unclean, the clean birds, as well as some cedar wood, some scarlet yarn, and hyssop. And then the priest is ordering him to slay one of the birds over an earthen vessel with spring water in it, so this vessel has to have fresh water in it. And taking the living bird with the cedar wood, the scarlet yarn, and the hyssop, the priest shall dip them all in the blood of the bird that was slain over the spring water, and then sprinkle seven times 
the man to be purified from his leprosy. So this sprinkling uh, <coughs> after the birds have been killed, uh, the sprinkling would uh, kind of seal that this person is truly clean from his leprosy and is a leper no more. When he has thus purified him, he shall let the living bird uh, fly away over the countryside. So the living bird takes off. And the man being purified shall then wash his garments. All the garments must be uh, washed. Shave off all of his hair. So the hair comes off. And he bathes in water. Only when he is thus made clean may he come inside the camp. So all of this purification, all this ritual is taking place outside the camp. Again, the idea that the healing has to be certified first because if he goes into the camp and, and he is active in his leprosy, the leprosy has not been healed, that could spread quickly among other people. So the ritual is really designed to make sure that the purification has taken place. The person is really healed of the leprosy and can return to the community. Kind of like our sense today with infectious diseases, how we would isolate someone who is highly infectious. And we would wear masks and robes and take them off. And we've all gone through that recently with the pandemic, the idea of making sure that this infection does not spread. Uh, but then when he comes inside the camp, he has to remain outside his tent for seven days. So there he's back into the camp, but he can't go in his tent. There must be this purification again for the seven days in case, again, there is some residual effect of the leprosy. And he goes into his tent, and in that restricted area in the tent, uh, family members could uh, get the disease. So again, it makes sense to stay outside the tent for that seven days. On the seventh day, he shall again shave off all the hair. The hair comes off again. Uh, of his the hair from his head, his beard, and also his eyebrows. And any other hair he may have, and also wash his garments and bathe his body in water so he will be clean. We can see that this process is very extensive, this process of uh, cleansing. And, and the real concept here is community. You can see the importance of the community. Uh, you're trying to protect the community. You're trying to do everything to keep the community safe. It's not a sense of really trying to discriminate against the per person with leprosy or uh, not have sensitivity with that person with leprosy, but a sense of protecting other people. Because the thought was uh, the leper comes in and the leprosy spreads and then it's in the entire community. So we have to do something to uh, <laughs> you know, make sure that the community is safe in the situation. So we notice Jesus really transcending these laws to a certain extent by allowing this leper to approach him. He doesn't say to the leper, get away from me. He doesn't turn his back on the leper. Uh, and not only allowing the approach, but reaching out and touching the leper. Because it was considered that if you touched someone, someone who had leprosy, you could yourself get leprosy. So Jesus is doing something rather dramatic, rather courageous, um, one, uh, an action that kind of violates some of the norms. But then at the same time, after healing the leper, encourages the leper to follow those norms, the norms of the religion to go to the priest and to follow what the priest says, uh, to make sure that the priest uh, certifies him as clean so that he doesn't do any harm to the community. So we see Jesus here in this uh, incident 
uh, being extraordinary in the sense of that action of approaching, allowing the leper to approach and touching the leper, and also being mindful of keeping the, the ritual. We see Jesus really here as a faithful Jew, uh, someone who cherishes his Jewish heritage and, and the laws and the rituals associated with Judaism, which to us today can seem kind of complex. Uh, why all these uh, processes in terms of the birds and the sprinkling and the yarn and all of, you know, all of this stuff, it seems like it's a lot. But again, to safeguard the community, the importance of the community is stressed uh, in this story. And also the extraordinary powers of Jesus and his willingness to go above and beyond.